Thank you very much. And it's very hard to come after Madam President. <laughs> Thank you to UN Women and OECD for the invitation and for this uh, timely roundtable. I think the moment I received the invitation on Thursday, I immediately called for a consultation with young women as part of a series of virtual African Union youth consultations on COVID-19 that my office has been convening for the last three weeks with Africa CDC, because we believe that these conversations should be uh, bottom-up. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today is not just the position of the African Union Youth Envoy, but also the position of 35 uh, young women from 15 countries, from all the five regions of Africa who wanted their voice to be heard uh, in this roundtable. So very tough to summarize in three minutes, but I will submit the full statement for your consideration to be included in the final uh, outcome. Uh, on the economic impact, uh, there are three main uh, points that were highlighted by the young African women during this consultation. First of all, we need to understand where the youth are in order to identify the effects of COVID-19 on them. We are the youngest continent in the world, 65% under 30, and even before the pandemic, the share of unemployed youth among the total unemployed can be as high as 60% in some countries. So we have some terrifying statistics. Uh, African economies generate only 3 million formal jobs annually for an estimated 12 million youth who are entering the workforce every year. And approximately 60% of jobs in Africa are considered vulnerable. Which means that during these lockdowns and homestays, young women who hustle and survive on insecure jobs will now be unemployed. And for those who uh, suffer disruption of trade and breaking of value chains, unfortunately, all the subsidies that are put in place right now by many member states are not favoring the informal sector, as Madam President uh, just said. And so what we really need is to look at how can we provide packages that look at women and youth in the informal sector and move probably from economic empowerment to also economic resilience uh, by strengthening the resilience of young women entrepreneurs, providing capital, providing digitalization of the markets and making uh, also the value chains more resilient providing skills that can build their businesses and livelihood. Because we all know that many of these young women are in the streets and are in the market and can barely really make minimum wage to be tax uh, compliant. Uh, the second point is that COVID-19 is changing and digitalizing the nature of communication and businesses. But we need to acknowledge that 70% of Africa's population is offline. And more than 40% of the world's population is offline. So there is an urgency to close the digital divide. Young women and girls in Africa are still pretty much out of the digital revolution. Their education and potential opportunities are completely disrupted. So how can we build more offline and online for those who don't have the technology to educate on e-marketing, to help digitalize businesses, to put offline community engagement on online platforms, to identify also and leverage on that one person in our communities who have digital access and who can maybe gather in cooperative formats the goods that can be sold online, for example. And three, and lastly, now because of the structural failing of our economic system, the challenge for all of us in policymaking spaces and civil society is to look at post-crisis needs. And for Africa, the continental free trade area is extremely important for our industrialization and transforming our economies to meet domestic and continental consumption. But how do we industrialize while seriously addressing structural, patriarchal, problematic economic systems that do not pay women equally, do not empower the youth, and do not deliver to the most vulnerable? So we really need to think about how do we get out of the crisis with transformation, and that is also intergenerational and feminist. And as Madame Nadine uh, said, uh, the future is female, but also the future is young. And that's why at the African Union, we launched a new initiative for youth called the African Youth Charter Hustlers to build a movement of youth-led accountability by putting young people central to post-COVID transformation, helping to reform African institutions, helping to transform economic and healthcare systems, and also holding our leaders accountable to really deliver for our generation and the next generations, but also to open space for us to co-lead the solutions with them.